Okay guys, we're out here in Topanga State Park. We're at the Moosh Trail Camp and we just walked from the parking lot at Trippert Ranch all the way out to the campground and now what we're going to do is walk from the campground up to Eagle Rock. I see a couple, you probably can't see it on the camera, but kind of to the right of me here is a couple California quail bobbing their heads about give me something to eat right there and so we'll just uh, start hiking here and you can get kind of a feel of how it is to go from the campground to uh, Eagle Rock and maybe we can also visit the uh, Another rock formation out here past that if we have time. This trail it will have poison ivy on it once we get past the meadow we're coming up on the meadow here in a few minutes but it's usually not too extensive and as long as you are paying attention and don't rub up against it you'll be fine as long as you're not too sensitive like I said on the last video the wildflowers are out it's the first part of June and apparently it's springtime in Topanga okay so we're in the Moosh Meadow it's just a few minutes to walk through it's a nice open area. And like everywhere in Southern California, just be careful uh, where you're stepping because there's always lizards on the ground on the trail and they're kind of curious and not too shy so you can get close enough to step on them they're not gonna like run away too much from you this little area it's always been closed when I've been here and I don't see a sign that says closed right now maybe they took it down recently but uh, that's not the way we're gonna go we're gonna go up to Eagle Rock as it says on this sign here if you can see the sign I'm sure that for the campers here uh, it's probably pretty beautiful at night if you can get a clear sky and see some stars though we are still pretty close to uh, the town of Santa Monica and so there is some light pollution in the area so it's not going to be as nice as like a Joshua tree or something like that or Yosemite and if you can hear in the background you do every once in a while get some noise pollution from the planes flying above you. This particular trail is mostly a single fall trail. Um, 
it's not one of the fire roads that they can drive a vehicle up. Um, if you're more interested in hiking with a partner, hiking with a group where you can stand side by side, then there is a different way up to Eagle Rock um, that you would access back at the Trippet Ranch parking lot. Now, uh, once we get down into the woods here in a few minutes, um, the trail does start to climb. So, and it climbs in a moderate fashion. So you have to be kind of in shape to tackle that. Uh, if you're a person that regularly hikes or just, just does some type of cardiovascular exercise then you'll be okay but if you're a person that sits on the couch most of the time just goes out and hikes maybe once a month or something then it may be a little bit of a challenge I remember when I was about uh, 10 years younger I was writing a book and of course I always write music on my days off and so I was doing a lot of sitting down, sitting at the house, not going out much, gained some weight, just eating a lot <laughs> and uh, I remember coming out here one day, it was so hot after having sat around for a year or two doing my projects and once I got to the top it hurt it felt like I had a flu or something I just laid down there and used my backpack as a pillow for, <laughs> for a good 15 or 20 minutes but if you're interested in a good cardiovascular hike in the valley here uh, something where you can train to go to like the bigger California hikes like up in Yosemite uh, I recommend going to O'Melveny Park in Granada Hills it's in the northern part of the valley and that one has some steep uh, trails on it that you can kind of train and once you master those then you're basically good to go for wherever else you want to go this is a giant crop of purple sage it's always here as long as I've been hiking here and uh, it dry, of course it dries out in the fall time, it smells good. kind of see in the background there that we have to climb up on that next hill but before we do that we have to descend down into the woods here
once we get down a little further, that's when we've got to start worrying about the poison ivy. So once we get down at the lowest point on the trail here, that's where it's kind of uh, more lush, more uh, uh, access to water for the plants, and that's where the poison ivy is going to be. But we're still descending down into the into the woods here. And you can see if I face upwards here that we're still kind of in the meadow here, we're on the edge of it at least. Once we get down to the bottom. You can use your hiking poles, but it's not necessary. I have mine, and I'm going to try to do the hike without them, just so you don't hear the clank, clank, clank of the poles. These are uh, oops. Uh, I forgot what the name of these poles are. Cascade Mountain Tech Aluminum Poles. Again, you can go to CampHikeWithCalifornia.com and I have an article on them. They weren't too expensive. They were in the $20 range. And uh, they're a little bit heavier than the uh, fancy poles you see at REI that are $150. But they do a good job. And here's one little area where you can see some water going here. And oh, I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's poison ivy down there. So be careful with that. avoid touching any of these plants but and as you can see throughout this entire walk we have all these nice wildflowers to look at And this part of the trail, it's kind of shady. You're kind of in this uh, dense chaparral, chaparral, however you say it. But uh, for the most part, you do want to wear sunscreen when you're out on this trail, especially once we pop up at the top. It's just all sun exposed. Whew. been hiking this same trail for 20 years about and I am starting to get a few little spots on my face from sun damage huh. so I've had to resort to wearing daily sunscreen now even when I'm not hiking and I may have to go out and buy a little tube of that over-the-counter different which I think is a retinoid that kind of modifies the way the skin grows and it may lighten up the spots a little bit we shall see yeah the poison ivy is terrible like right in here Alright, so you can see the creek here, a 
for the last decade there hasn't really been running water but since we got so much water last year um, it's currently running which is nice see a few bugs in the water there I don't think it can support fish like you see up at uh, Santa Anita Canyon but there is at least a little bit of aquatic life happening and so this is basically the lowest part of the trail from here on out it's going to be a moderate climb uh, like I said before just be prepared for that and stop if you have to there are a few stopping points up here and also be careful out here I have encountered a Pacific rattlesnake on this trail um, when I was hiking O'Melveny last week or last weekend I saw three Pacific rattlesnakes and I walked past one maybe his head was about half a foot from my left shoe but he was rather docile and didn't rattle at me Let's go back and watch that video of me getting a good shot of him as I turned around on the trail after I walked past him. Uh, he was kind of big. Oh. It's probably pretty uncommon that they'd actually try to bite you unless you step too hard on them or something of course they're gonna try to protect themselves but it's best just to avoid them and if they rattle at you kind of stay away as far as possible it's still early in the day so hopefully they're not out to sunbathe at this point oh gosh Just last time I was here, the trail in this area is not too uh, maintained, or at least the foliage isn't cut back. The trail looks okay. So just be careful where you're stepping. Got these tall, tall grasses out here. I'm sure for some people it's pretty itchy actually these things in the fall time or maybe later on in the summer uh, when they put up their uh, flowers and heads it actually feels kind of uh, it actually feels kind of good walking through like it's all soft I like what I'm doing right now. And again, the bees are out, so if you are allergic, maybe this isn't the best trail for you. video where I filmed going from uh, the Tripit Ranch parking lot out to the uh, campsite there is a fallen tree it's 
on the side of the trail. It's been there for a couple of years now. And there's always a beehive <laughs> right there. So like I said in the last video, you're gonna have to walk past a bunch of bees to get to the campground. Now this isn't the trail, this is just a little step off. But you can kind of see the countryside here. Kind of a unique feature to Southern California is that yucca plant. I don't know if you can see that kind of popping up vertically with the light yellow leaves on it. All right, let's go. Wait for it. Almost feels soft just walking through all these grasses here. Yeah, it looks like the trail's been maintained here. Clean steps up. Ooh. This trail is a little bit of a longer way to get to Eagle Rock. So if you're looking for a little bit longer hike up to Eagle Rock, this is the good way to go. not like too much longer maybe a few tenths of a mile or so I was walking up this trail one day and about right here on the trail there was a couple descending going the opposite direction and the man was completely naked so I'm not sure what that was all about maybe he lost a bed or something <laughs> but uh, it's just kind of odd odd thing to see I mean, Topanga, something a little bit unexpected. Ooh. There's a stopping point coming up. I may stop because I hear some folks coming up on the back of me here. Good, good. How you been? Good. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> yeah.
So up here is the stopping point. something it just dead dead ends right here It's always good to bring like a, at least a liter, liter of fluid out here. Um, I know everybody's uh, sweat rate is different and their metabolism is different. Um, I've written about this on the uh, Camp Hike with California.com website pretty extensively. I used to have a nutrition support clinician uh, certification and so I'm somewhat aware of fluid and electrolyte therapy so you can go read my uh, somewhat scientific writings on those things but let's go Nice and clean right here. And right here is probably the hardest part, I'd say, as far as the climb goes. I was out here one year, and there was an older couple from North Carolina, and they'd gotten up to this point on the trail, and the wife was like, okay, no more, no more, we're going back down. <laughs> so they took a a nice little rest right here then they walk back down which is too bad because they're not that far away from Eagle Rock at this point thing about this trail as you're climbing right here uh, is you don't want to do this with like 
worn out tennis shoes or something you want to have a good hiking shoe that has some uh, grip to it has a good relative friction coefficient and usually the one that has a pretty good uh, grip to it is the uh, uh, oh, what's it called? Whatever I'm wearing right here, X Ultra Ford from Salomon. I think mine are Gore Tex. And they seem to work pretty good on all these trails in Southern California, and I've even used them up in Yosemite on the big granite trails out there and they tend to work good on wet granite as well they're almost like a hybrid between a big thick hiking shoe and a trail runner where they've got a little bit of stiffness and support but they also have enough give to where you can kind of Feel what you're walking on on the trail has some pliability to it. Oh. colorful right in here. I don't know if you're seeing all that. It's actually kind of fragrant too. Uh, this area was uh, affected by the fire a few years ago but since then all this has grown back in rather well it's interesting on what things tend to start first I noticed kind of up here on this mountain in front of us at one point after the fire had eaten everything up uh, these wild cucumber plants were like the first things to start growing back I haven't really seen that many today
Thank you. <laughs> to the junction where the fire road meets up with the road to Eagle Rock. I think it's called the Eagle Rock Junction. And then after that we'll be climbing again. And it's kind of hard to do that one last bit of climbing in the summertime when the heat's out. I've tried to do it like it in the mid 90s. I've done it in the uh, low 100s and it's rough. If you stop moving you can close your eyes and you'll just see like, like stars. Like you're starting to get compromised with regard to the heat.
This has all been flattened out, so it's not as hard as it was to walk up. So from here you can see the main fire road that most of the people use to get up here. And off in the distance you can see the Pacific Palisades and it's probably not too clear on camera but you can see the ocean.
Almost there.
right guys that's the hike I'm just gonna head back down I believe save the uh, other rock formation for another day so I'll see you guys on the next one